when I first started talking with Drew and Charles about the research needs in Illinois, um, one of the reasons they started to talk with me had to do with my experience uh, about three years ago working at the FCC on the National Broadband Plan. And in my capacity on, at the National Broadband Plan, I was the research director who focused a lot on what is going on with adoption of broadband, who is using broadband and for what purposes, and importantly, who is not using broadband. In conversations with Drew and Charles, as they started to think through how to carry out PCI's mission of better broadband, better lives in Illinois, it was thought that it would be helpful to benchmark broadband adoption in the state of Illinois. So working with um, a number of people on the PCI staff, we developed a survey, which I'm going to talk about the results of today. And this survey um, focuses on places in Illinois outside of Chicago. Why exclude Chicago? Well, because we have Karen Mossberger, who has focused a great deal on Chicago, and we'll be talking about what's going on with broadband in Chicago. So we decided to devote our resources to places um, other than Chicago, and then also focus on PCI's E-team regions. So the survey was conducted so that we could get representative samples from each of the 10 E-team regions throughout the state so that the survey on broadband adoption could in fact be useful specifically to each of the E-teams, uh, both, e e both uh, PCI staff and the various constituencies they work with. Um, we also, um, as the slide says, conducted a random digit dial telephone survey. And we um, did it um, earlier this year, in the early part of, of 2012. And a um, couple reasons for doing a random digit dial telephone survey. One, it still is um, among the best way to, to get a sense of what's going on in the representative population of the place that you're surveying. Secondly, uh, um, although on online surveys these days, and you'll be hearing about one from, from Derek's very good work later, um, are useful in a lot of important respects. An online survey is not going to cut it if you're worried about people who don't have broadband. So for that reason, we did the random digit dial telephone survey so that we could reach all residents of the parts of Illinois that we wanted to reach, those with broadband, those without broadband. And for those of you in the crowd who are um, either methodologists or closely followed the uh, presidential uh, polling debates in, in the uh, past several months, we did include cell phones in the sample. Um, in, uh, there were lots of uh, debates um, about the um, presidential polling about whether there were cell phones included or not. Um, just for fun, how many in this room are cell phone only in that you do not have a landline in your home? So this is looking like a group that over-indexes on cell phone only. About 34% of Americans have cut the cord. They have cell phones only, they do not have landline phones. Traditionally, in the polling business, you've got to, you would get a random selection of landline telephones, and since telephone penetration in this country is, uh, or at least six or eight or 10 years ago, was northward of you know 95% for landlines, um, that was fine. But as people cut the cord, you have to um, add cell phones into your sample in order to get a representative sample. That actually, in the polling business, costs more money. It has um, a different set of methodological challenges, but you pretty much have to do it, certainly if you're worried about um, things pertaining to people's uses of technology. So yes, we use cell phones in the sample. Um, we also, for reasons that I hope will become clear, um, focused a lot on the role of smartphones in adoption of the internet. We'll talk about that. Um, and then finally, I'll talk a good bit about non-adopters who doesn't have broadband in Illinois and why not, and then close out with some discussion of the implication for stakeholders. So basic overview of the survey findings, we found that 79% of Illinois, Illinois survey 
Illinois adults surveyed are internet users, which means they use the internet in some capacity, maybe from home, maybe with broadband, maybe with dial-up, um, maybe not from home, but um, say at work or at a um, cyber cafe or something like that. But overall, 79% of respondents said that they use the internet. 68% of Illinois adults surveyed have broadband at home. 46% are smartphone users, so they have um, a handheld device that accesses the internet wirelessly that runs on um, iOS or Android or RAM operating system or Windows operating system. 20% have e-readers, like a Kindle or a Nook, and then 19% are tablet users. And all those figures for Illinois align pretty closely with what you see in, in national surveys. Um, the 19% tracks pretty closely with what the Pew Research Center found early in 2012 on tablet usage. I think that's ticked up a little bit in some of Pew's surveys. So the Illinois data that we'll be talking about aligns reasonably well with national um, survey results. Um, and the 68% of Illinois uh, residents having broadband aligns very closely with what um, the NTIA using uh, the Census uh, Department has found to be the broadband adoption rate for, for the state of Illinois. Um, here's a very busy slide, um, but it will all be made available to you, so not to worry if you can't take notes or can't see everything. But we looked, as I said, at um, broadband and smartphone adoption across 18 regions. So you can see, looking at this slide, that in the northern and uh, northwestern parts of the state, um, or northeastern parts of the state, you see the highest rates of broadband adoption and smartphone adoption. So the region five in the center, the northeast but not Cook County, we have 76% of people having broadband at home, 55% having smartphones. If you look at the north central region, region two, we have 70% with broadband, 43% with smartphones. A lot of the other regions are sort of coming in at average. When you start to get um, to the northwestern part of the state, to the southeast central part of the state, and the southern part of the state, both uh, the southern and southeastern central part of the state, there is where you start to see both broadband adoption and smartphone adoption to be lower um, than the statewide average. So in the report, which um, PCI released now about two weeks ago, um, it goes into greater detail on some of these findings. But these are parts of the state that are more rural. They have a larger share of older folks. Um, they have people whose um, household incomes trail the statewide average. Um, and they have uh, individuals whose levels of ed educational attainment are lower than the average. These are all things that tend to pull down broadband adoption rates, and sure enough, we do see it in those parts of, of Illinois. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of an interlude to talk about smartphone adoption and race, um, in, in part because it's one of the more interesting interactions in the adoption uh, sphere today. And you can see that um, when you start to look at broadband next to smartphone only access, you, you do see these interesting patterns by race. Now, smart, by smartphone only, I'm referring to people whose main means of getting online are a smartphone. They don't have broadband connection at home. Maybe they have dial-up, but they probably don't have dial-up. So they go online using a smartphone only um, on a, you know, a small handheld device. They don't have a laptop and a home broadband subscription. So in Illinois, 7% of residents are smartphone-only users, which means if you add up smartphone and uh, broadband adoption figures for Illinois, you get 75% of people having access by either of those two means. When you look at whites, slightly higher share with um, broadband, slightly lower share with um, smartphone-only. But when you start to look at race, you see that Blacks and Hispanics are lower broadband adoption uh, households on average, with 56% in each group having broadband at home. But they're overperforming when it comes to smartphone only. 
and in, in fact, generally with smartphone access uh, more broadly. So 15% of blacks, 18% of Hispanics have um, smartphone only. And you can see when adding those two means of access together, the digital divide as we have traditionally thought of it um, kind of vanishes. Um, you can see that smartphones really make a difference for um, African Americans and Hispanics. From the smartphone, um, uh, on average, um, smartphone only users said that, on average, they said that one of those things listed was very important, or 1.3. But if you have broadband and smartphone, um, you're about twice as likely to think that uh, the internet can be a real productivity booster than if you only have broadband at home. So again, we see the smartphone being really kind of a secret sauce to engage people with thinking about how the internet can help in their daily lives. Um, but it is a secret sauce that works best with another important ingredient, which is broadband access. Let me, let me now turn to broadband adoption and uh, broadband adoption barriers. Again, in the sample that we had, um, which was very helpfully a large sample of 3,500 respondents, um, we found that 68% have broadband at home, which of course means that 32% of those that we sampled um, do not have broadband at home. And with a large sample size of non-adopters on the order of 1,200 in this particular study, it enabled us to do some analysis of what was going on with non-broadband adopters with respect to um, what is keeping them offline. And just as a general overview, when you start, to, when you look at non-adopters compared to uh, broadband adopters, they're less educated. 62% uh, of non-adopters are high school graduates or less compared to 37% for broadband users. They have lower incomes, um, nearly half with household incomes below $30,000 per year um, as compared to one in five for broadband users. And they're older. Non-adopters have an average age of 57. Um, broadband adopters um, have an average age of about 42 or 43. Um, so again, we spent some time on the survey really digging in to non-adoption. And we did a two-step process methodologically. We let users essentially check the box multiple times when given a list of reasons why they may not have broadband at home. So that was step one. Step two, after people were permitted in the survey to uh, kind of ruminate a little bit about what reasons they have for not being online, we asked them, okay, what's your most important reason? And just as a bit of a methodological aside, um, I used to work at the Pew Research Center, and we'd ask people open-ended questions about, well, why don't you have um, broadband? And a lot of people would say, it's just not for me. They, they, um, sort of gave sort of vague answers that we categorized as, well, people just don't think it's very relevant. And typically, we get nearly half of non-respondents saying, um, uh, giving one of the sort of mishmash of answers that led us to classify their reason for not being online as they just don't think it's for them, it's not relevant, it's not important to them. This as a researcher, that became a little dissatisfying for me because it just seemed like an awfully high rate of people just sort of um, telling the survey uh, administrator to get away from me, I don't care about that question. So I tried to think of a different way to go about um, doing this, and that's the way that I just described. Read people a list, allow them to um, check multiple boxes if appropriate, and then kind of pin them down thereafter with the most important reason. And that has the effect, as we see, of um, reducing the number of people who say, ah, it's just not for me, it's not relevant, I think you get somewhat sharper answers than you otherwise would. Um, so what do we find? Here in this table, we have in the first column the results when people are essentially allowed to pick more than one reason, which is why the column sums up to more than 100%, because people were able to say, monthly fee, but also I can't afford a computer. A lot of people then also said um, it was a reason having to do with lack of relevance. Either they don't want more speed, they don't use the internet much, or 
there's nothing online that they'd like to see. Um, digital literacy cited by 44% of non-adopters. Um, these are the folks who said that they're worried about bad things that happen online or that they're not comfortable using the internet. 14% said available, and then 22% classified as other. So you can see in that first column, for one, people, in fact, cite more than one reason for not having broadband at home. Uh, the average non-adopter chose three of those reasons listed um, in the first column. So again, multiple barriers are part of the equation when thinking about what the reasons are that people do not have broadband. If you go over to the next column, um, we then ask uh, people to basically pin down their reasons for us. What's the most important reason? And you can see that um, cost leads the way, broken down in two ways. 29% said cost was the most important reason. 16% um, said uh, monthly fee. 9% said they couldn't afford a computer. The remaining increment is people who said they didn't want to um, pay a monthly uh, activation fee. Relevance um, is cited by 17 as the most important reason. Then followed by digital literacy, availability, a lack of availability of infrastructure, cited by just 2%, and then 21% uh, citing some other reason. So again, cost leads the way, but cost has to be thought of in two ways, having to do with the monthly service fee and the cost of the computer. But other reasons matter a great deal as well, relevance and digital literacy. And importantly, um, it's typically not just one thing that is a barrier for people. It's usually more than one thing. Um, this table, which is much busier than the prior one, um, is actually, in my view, kind of interesting and kind of cool. We, in the survey, asked people some questions to try to determine whether non-broadband adopters had an interest in using broadband. And we just asked them, are you interested in getting broadband? We also asked them if they had had broadband in the past and um, might be interested in, in getting it in the future. And it broke down that about, um, that 24% of non-adopters um, were interested in getting broadband at home, but for some reason didn't have it. The remaining two thirds, 76% um, of non-adopters didn't express much interest in getting broadband. Um, and we were then also able to look at, well, what are the reasons for not having broadband by degree of interest? So in the first two columns, we have results on reasons why people do not have broadband for the interested in broadband group, the 24%. And you can see there, cost is the big deal. 50% nearly say that cost is the main reason they don't have broadband with monthly fee and computer affordability making up uh, the bulk of that. Issues like relevance and digital literacy matter, but uh, to, uh, to a much smaller degree um, than the average and specifically when compared to the um, people in the final two columns, which are the three quarters of non-broadband non adopters who say they're not that interested in getting broadband. There, you have a much more evenly distributed set of reasons for not having broadband. You can see in terms of the most important reason, cost still is a driver, but at a much lesser rate than for the interested uh, in broadband group of non-adopters. But issues such as relevance and digital literacy um, play a much stronger role. So the takeaway is that those non-adopters who are interested in broadband, who are kind of the low-hanging fruit if you want to increase broadband adoption rates in Illinois, um, really need cost help in um, getting them online. So the relatively easier ones need a cut rate monthly plan and a cut rate computer. The larger group of non-broadband adopters who are not yet interested in broadband, those are the folks that need more, uh, I guess you could say, heavy-handed interventions to help them understand what the usefulness is of broadband and um, what it could bring to their lives. Again, the cost for them matters, but they really need a lot of coaching on um, what the utility is of broadband 
and how it could make a positive difference in their lives. Let's take another look at what draws people to broadband. In the survey, we were able to ask recent adopters of the internet uh, some questions about um, what drew them to getting internet service when they got it. Then we were also able to ask non-adopters some hypothetical questions on what they think they would do with the internet if they had access. And as has ever been the case in studying people's online behavior, social users, social uses of the internet really hooks people to um, getting online. So if you can open up to non-adopters how broadband can help them stay in touch with family and friends, um, you have a chance to get them online. Health and medical information was to me a, a surprisingly strong reason cited by non-adopters as to what would lure them to getting broadband. So opening up people's minds and eyes to the um, health and medical uses of broadband um, would help get them online. There's also a sense among non-broadband users that the internet is increasingly becoming a place um, that is the only place where you can get key information about important things in their lives. So some people say, yeah, I, I kind of get that, that um, everything's going online and I have to go there to get information. There are fewer offline um, services than were available in the past. And then finally, um, the last one is for entertainment, but also, uh, importantly, right before that is education. People will get broadband if their kids need it for school or if they need it for school. There is not a single factor behind non-adoption for people. It's often tempting since cost is a lever that we think we can get hold of to think that cost is the reason that people don't have broadband. Yes, it's important, but the analysis and the data shows that other reasons loom large as well, and you need um, uh, comprehensive approaches to getting people online, not just uh, cutting costs. So with that, um, I will uh, conclude.